As a former teacher and a current board member, I personally know the reputation that Doris Brevard had as an educator and principal in the Pittsburgh Public Schools. In fact, there is a picture of her on the second floor right around the corner from the board office, the only principal to have a picture displayed for many years. She remains a legacy for all of our families and our children uh, of the Pittsburgh Public Schools because she has done so much. Doris Brevard's story begins years before she was born. In the words of her great-great-grandfather, Civil War hero Robert Smalls, my race needs no special defense. All they need is an equal chance in the battle of life. Raised in Pittsburgh during the Depression, Doris was born into a household that valued education. My father was a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania Dental School. Doris stayed closer to home using her gubernatorial scholarship to study education at the University of Pittsburgh. She later completed graduate work in library science and counseling at Columbia University. Doris's first assignments with Pittsburgh Public Schools were as school librarian and counselor. My first assignment at uh, Van was a, a librarian. I was at uh, a Baxter Elementary in Homewood. And I was the librarian, counselor, and assistant principal. Her motto for her students was that all children can learn. And she also once told me to do it right or not to do it at all. So I, I take that to heart and remember her in, in that way. She was a world traveler. She enjoyed playing bridge. She attended the symphony. There were just some very wonderful memories about my aunt, but more than anything, it was educating black children to their fullest potential. Could you share a, a bit more with us about her contributions to the community, specifically um, her life impact on education? Um, here within this, in the city of Pittsburgh and, 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 and surrounding? Well, much of her, as I said, her time was at Van School where the children accelerated in reading math uh, and arithmetic. Uh, their scores at, were higher than anyone else's in the city. And I think that that was a great impact um, for the city because she understood how children needed to learn and and the fact that she was able to run her school the way she felt that her school needed to be run. In 1968, Doris was hired as principal of Robert L. Van Elementary. From the start, she faced an uphill battle. So they were talking about the achievement of the children in, in the Hill District. And the two supervisors kept repeating that these children weren't able to function too well. So I was determined to find out what was, what was wrong. Why were the children at Van or in the Hill District not achieving? I was determined I was going to prove them wrong. <laughs> When I met with my teachers the first time, I told them that this was our school. Regardless of what the board said or what the board demanded, this was our building, and we were to make it as best, the best school that we possibly could. I enjoyed being a principal. I enjoyed working with my teachers because they were all very supportive. Doris's personal approach was appreciated by her teachers. Oh. She was just an individual who knew what she wanted and how she was going to go about and produce the results that were best for her children. Um, she and my uncle never had children, so she was able to really concentrate uh, on the children at Van School with a lot of energy and, and knowledge. Can you share with us 
her her contributions to the 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 church, the Episcopal Church, specifically Holy Cross, and what did Holy Cross mean to her? Well, you you have to understand that it was her grandfather that was given them some of the monies, as I understand it, to begin St. Augustine's, which is the foundation, one of the foundational churches of of Holy Cross. Uh, the story that she always told me was that um, her family attended um, Emmanuel Church, um, which Episcopal Church on the north side. They were not welcomed and William Stewart, who was a banker and a member of the Episcopal Church, gave her grandfather, William Tibbs, money to start a mission church there on Jacksonian Street on the north side. So when I think about, it's just her legacy. Um, and Auntie understood her roots being the the great, great, great granddaughter of Robert Smalls, who, um, if anyone knows the story, confiscated a Confederate ship during the Civil War and sailed it to the Union and went on to become a member of the United States Congress. So I think un Auntie understood the shoulders that she was standing on. We were able to teach these children, and we didn't have to water down anything to meet their needs. Discipline was very, very strict. When you walked in the van, you could hear a pin drop. The children were quiet, respectful of each other and of the adults. But she was that influential on many of us in my class, but on young ladies, because while she was the excellent teacher, she taught you to be a lady. Her kindness, the way she spoke to people on an even level, the smile, everything about her is noteworthy, everything. We had magic doors. And once you came through these magic doors, you were a very important person and you were able to do whatever you wanted to do and you were going to achieve. And the children believed that. And we believed it too.